Hello and welcome to part three of this course, where I'm teaching you how to work with NetCDF files in Python. Today we're going to learn how to extract data from a NetCDF file and dump it to a pandas data frame that we can write to a CSV file or an XLSX file that you can load into Excel or LibreOffice or whatever you use. Let's start by importing the modules that we're going to use today. So let's import XArray as XR which is going to help us work with NetCDF files. Let's import numpy as np and import date time as dt. As always, I'm going to give you the URL of some data that you can load in. So you can find this URL in the description below the video. Or if you're following along with the Jupyter Notebook that accompanies this video, you can find it in there. These data are available via OpenDAP, which means we can access them without having to download them locally to our computer. So let's load those data into Python. We can go ds equals xr.opendataset and our URL. And I want to have a look at that X-ray object to see what we're working with. So I'm going to run that. And I'm going to open this up here. So what we have here is a single depth profile of data. We have a single dimension, which is pressure, with 320 points. That means that any of our variables, which have a dimension of pressure, have 320 points. I'm not going to look at the rest of the file in too much detail, but you can go back to part one of this course if you need some help understanding what a NetCDF file is and how to read certain parts of it in Python. For now, we're just going to remember the names of a few different variables. We have the temp, which I assume is temperature, and psal, which is, I assume, a practical salinity. So let's minimize this again. What I now want to do is extract data for a single variable. So we can do temp, ds being our X-ray object, and temp being the variable name. And if we print that, we can see the metadata related to that variable and which coordinate variable is associated with the temperature variable. But to get our values, we can do dot values. So this writes the data to a numpy array. If we want to reuse them later, we might do something like this. Temperature equals this. And if you ever want to confirm what data type you're working with, you can always do type and your variable. And you can print that. And you can see the confirmation that this is indeed a NumPy array in the terminal. Let's make this a bit smaller again. But in this case, we don't want a NumPy array. We want to write our data to a pandas data frame. So let's remove this. And we're going to create an object df, the data frame. And instead of printing with values like this, we're just going to write to data frame. Let's also have a look at that data frame. We can run it here. And what you can see is that we have returned not only the temperature values, but also the pressure values alongside it, because this is the associated coordinate variable. It might be that we want to extract more than one variable. If we want to do that, we need to change this to double brackets. That's because now we're assigning a list of variables inside our first set of brackets. So temp, and let's go for psal as well for our salinity values. I'll run this again, and there we go. We might also want to export all of the variables, in which case we can get rid of this, and just write ds to data frame, and we have each data variable written as a separate column. If we want to export those data, we can. We can just do df our data frame object dot to csv and then we're going to give the absolute file path to where we want to save them so i'm going to go home new um, documents and net cdf underscore python which is this directory here and we're going to do ctd data dot csv if i run this now we can see on the left hand side the CSV file have been saved. 
If we want to export the data to an XLSX file, but we can open in Excel or LibreOffice or whatever you use, we can do that. Instead, you write to Excel, change this to XLSX. There you go. I'm receiving an error here. And that's because in the Condor environment I'm working with, I don't have this module OpenPyXL installed. So if you have the same, you can just do pip install OpenPyXL. And this needs to be running in your terminal, not in Python. Let's run this again. And there we go. We're going to look at a second data set now that has multiple dimensions. So I'm going to remove these three lines. I'm going to change this URL. And again, this second URL is also in the description. Now let's print these data so we can see what we're working with. So those of you who've been following the course will be aware of these data. We looked at them in the previous session where we created this map of the data. And what these data are are global surface temperature anomalies through time. So we have four dimensions, time, latitude, longitude, and Z, which is our vertical dimension. Z has a value of one. And so these data are essentially three-dimensional. We have coordinate variables for each of our dimensions. And we have this four-dimensional or essentially three-dimensional data array for our anomaly values anom. There's a link to these data in the description if you want to use them, along with the previous data set we used. And please remember to cite them correctly if you use them in a publication, just as I have done in the description, but in your list of references, along with any other publication you cite. So what happens here if we want to write this to a data frame? Well, it's exactly the same, actually. We can just do ds dot to data frame. Let's write this to an object called df. And let's print that data frame and have a look. This might take a little while to run. We can see a preview of the data frame. Obviously, this contains a lot of rows. So we're just seeing the rows at the start and the end. We can see we have a single column for the anomaly values. Each of our coordinate variables has been written as a separate index. And that's actually very nice because it means that some of the values have been uh, merged over a number of rows, similar to how you would merge cells in Excel or something like this. Any missing values have been written to NAN. I can assure you that not every value is NAN in this uh, variable, despite what you see here. But if you want some further reassurance of that, we can write those data to a CSV file, df dot to CSV, home and ucam documents, let cdf underscore python. And we're going to call that uh, temperature anomalies.csv. Let's run this again. And if we see our values, no NAN values have been written here. This has been left blank. You can see this is color coded. But if I scroll down, you start to see where we have values. But what if you're only interested in the data for a single time? How can you extract those first? Well, let's create some space here. We're going to call it time slice. We're going to make this equal to ds, our x-ray object, dot cell to select. And we just want the data where time is equal to some time. So this is why we've imported date time here. We can do dt dot date time. And I know from a previous video that we only have data for the first of each month. So let's do something like 2020, 1, 2, 0, 1. Month comes before date. If we're not sure whether there is data for that value, we can also um, do something like method equals nearest. And that will extract the nearest time slice to that date. Then we can write that to a data frame as well. So time slice to data frame, and we'll rerun that. And I did get a warning here, but we're not allowed to have leading zeros here in date time. So run this again. And if we look at our CSV file now, 
we can see it only includes data for that month. And in case you skipped over earlier, you can also write this to Excel. So that's everything for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. And I hope you'll join me for the next video in the course where I'll teach you how to create an etcdf file in Python. See you then.